they just turned on the music, they blared it and let us just go nuts, you know? And it was we awesome. explored from there. They said, you can take every pop, throw it in any direction. I'd love to see what was left on the cutting room floor, actually. <laughs> Let's talk then about the pilot. I think one of my favorite scenes was when you guys family came together in the courtyard for the funeral because mm -hmm. then it's really getting to see all of your dynamics. Yeah. All this history, the subtext that's kind of there. Tell me about shooting that and, and whether it set a tone mm -hmm. for you guys or if there was a favorite moment that helped, you know, kind of build something in your own mind about where you were going to go with the character. Yeah, there's a few moments in the pilot that, that did that actually, mm -hmm. that, that sort of was like, oh, we're starting to see what this dynamic is now and how we're also learning how each of us were going to play the roles, you know, yeah. seeing different ways that everyone was doing everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that funeral scene was, for a start, we were shooting that in minus 17. Oh. So it was like, it was pretty cold and there was obviously the and rain and everything. fake rain. Fake, fake rain. rain. Yeah, so there wasn't actually a lot of talking going on <laughs> offset because the cameras would yeah, it was so <laughs> cut and then we'd all just like disperse into the warmest yeah. corner that we could yeah. find. Um, but you know, the scene in the pilot where, where he's kind of asking about the monocle and ac basically accusing one of us of killing our father. Yeah. That We were sat in that room for almost 10 hours together. So that was like the first time that we'd all been in a room together and kind of refining the dynamic yeah. and like yeah. how we all spin off of each other. Um, and also that one with Five comes back, right? When we, he, he's he's just come back and he's making the sandwich. In the kitchen. And oh, it's sort yeah. of thin because that was the first time that Five comes back and see mm -hmm. how he changes the dynamic. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's like the obviously the adult siblings dynamic and then when Five sort of changes everything, he's this weird spanner in the world. So yeah, it changes the great. dynamic completely. So Steve, you know, when you're creating a show, you um, the visuals are amazing, but of course this is a different medium and such. What for you in the pilot were some of the signature things that you felt really stayed to the spirit of the comic book, but then also were some departures that just felt organic to you? I was drawn to this because of the dysfunctional nature of the family. So I love the scenes when they're just, you know, they've returned after a funeral and they, they're they strangers in the house they grew up in. And I felt I could relate to that. and. Uh, I, those were the pieces I thought were the most important and really, you know, drove that pilot along. It's just sort of how they would come back and even say hello to each other again after all this time. Ground. There's someone out there who's trying to stop me from preventing the apocalypse. In Hazel's case, it was really weird to play. He's kind of a nobody. He has no identity, has no personality. He's never thought to have one. It's never occurred to him. All he knows is he's not happy and he has never even thought about changing that. There's sort of an Eeyore thing going on. So he's finally forced to start thinking and realizing, wait, I'm a bad guy, I didn't know that, and uh, I, I don't like that. Yeah. It was hard to play because of that, yeah. uh, but also fun to play. It was fun to know if I'm out of my comfort zone, if I feel uncomfortable or lost, that's because the character does, right. not because I do. It was kind of hard to realize while shooting but once I realized, okay, you know, a lot of characters, you know, another Netflix show I did, Mindhunter, that character's always in his comfort zone. Yeah. I know I'm doing it right if I feel correct. With Hazel, it's the opposite. Uh, that was that was really unique for me. I want to talk about two moments that I really loved in the second episode. One was between the two of you where he has given you all kinds <laughs> of attitude. I just love the dynamic one. Um, being able to kind of have him back as a character and then playing against what is five, an old man's attitude, <laughs> a young man's body. So tell me about how you guys kind of work that dynamic out. Well, you know, that whole sequence of, I believe you're talking about five at Vanya's apartment. Exactly. That sequence started in episode one and that was the first day for us, so. That was the first scene we shot. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. So was it the end of the first ep? No. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The very mm -hmm. last episode. Mm -hmm. So coming I mean, into the very it for last the, scene, yeah. yeah. The second episode, it was kind of a continuation of that chemistry, yeah. and we definitely learned a lot more about it, and it was a lot of fun to shoot. Did you base it on somebody? Were you observing, or is there someone in your life where you went? You know, I kind of see a lot of similarities as far as tonal wise, and the kind of grumpy old man to <laughs> Old Man Logan. Yeah. The new movie. So that was one inspiration. Yeah, I loved that movie. Yeah. The writing. One of my favorite superhero films of all time. So in episode two, we get your introduction with Cha Cha, who is of course the great Mary J. Blige. And when did you know that she was cast as your partner? And then what were your just conversations about how the two of you kind of wanted, what your dynamic was gonna be? Did you rehearse much or did you just let it be natural? 
a little bit of both. You know, I think near the end of the show, we both felt like, God, if we could only go back knowing what we know now. But I think that's the bumps that every uh, performer takes in the first season of a show. Uh, a lot of it uh, just really happened organically. You know, we didn't meet more than really once in passing before we got to set, so we didn't know what it would be like. What we found is that we both uh, really enjoy each other's company and, and mostly with humor. We just love cracking each other up. Get out of the way, dumbass! The way we kind of look at it is a little brother, big sister sort of thing that they've developed together in a very weird way because her character doesn't have feelings. Episode four, you get a dance party with her? I, when I signed on to the project, I had no idea I was, I, I was supposed to dance. So that, that was a surprise. And, and, and they just turned on the music, they blared it and let us just go nuts, you know? And it was we awesome. explored from there. They said, you can take every prop, throw it in any direction. I'd love to see what was left on the cutting room floor, actually. <laughs> So then you two in Maritech, which is amazing, the adventures. Oh yeah, Maritech. <laughs> of the two of you going, uh, father and son. Tell me about the dynamic. Did they let you kind of improv in those? Just because it felt like such a really great organic scene that it just felt yeah. really inherent to both of you. We were, we were, we were. That was a fun day. Yeah. improv all over the shop. Um, it was mad, wasn't it? That? Smashing snow globes off my head and stuff. Yeah. My yeah, favorite line is, one. oh, world peace. And it wasn't even in the script. It was great. 